Welcome. This is 49E1 and this is entitled Electric Charge. And if we look at our first slide, we've got two things going on here. The first thing is a, a diagram showing um, Millikan's apparatus. It consists of a, a chamber yeah, divided into two parts. In the top part we have an aerosol spray which sprays sewing machine oil, very light oil. Um, droplets so small that they tend to move at a constant speed as they fall through the air. They reach, they've reached their terminal velocity. They're so small. And these can be charged either by friction as they are sprayed, but also they sometimes will use a, a, a radioactive source to cause some ionization in there. And then there's a hole in the floor. So these things, you know, slowly settle because of gravity. And there's a hole in the floor. So some of them will fall through into the lower chamber. And uh, the... the the ceiling of the lower chamber and the floor of the lower chamber are made of uh, metal and so we can apply a voltage, a potential difference to those two plates. Now as we're going to find out what happens is that uh, if you have a, a positive charge it will go from the positive plate towards the negative plate, it will be driven and if you have a negative charge, it will be pushed from the negative charge, negative plate towards the positive plate. So you can drive the uh, charged droplets upwards and downwards. And you can time them as they travel through the air. You can let them fall at a constant speed. And by looking at a whole bunch of particles, one at a time, by looking at a whole bunch of particles and doing measurements like that, you can find the charge of the uh, particles. And it's not that you find that a particle will have a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. What you'll find is that when you look at the charge on the particles, you'll find that the minimum gap, the minimum step between uh, charges is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And so we realize there's this building block, there's this uh, quantum block of charge, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So we say, oh, there's two types of charge, positive and negative. We can also say that like charges repel, unlike charges attract. We can say charge can be measured in coulombs and that charge is quantized. And for example, the charge of an electron, the charge of a proton is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And that's what Millikan figured out. And Millikan was one of the early, uh, uh, very famous American scientists. Um, really did excellent work. This experiment is done today in many laboratories and it tends to be a bit of a rite of passage because it takes a long time to do. It's not that you measure one particle really well. It's that you measure many particles and look at the statistics of the, of the charge, charges that they carry. Now back in the day, when uh, many years ago, not that long ago actually, we thought that the elementary particles were the electron and the proton and then we later on discovered the neutron um, and it turns out that the charge on an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs and the charge on a proton is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs and the charge on the electron is negative and the charge on the proton is positive and after a, a, a fair bit of experimentation, people found out that the nucleus consisted of protons mixed in with neutrons. The neutrons were hard to find. 
protons are easy to find. And then around these things were electrons that sometimes you picture as being orbital, like planets around the sun, and sometimes you picture as being clouds, where you're not sure where they are, they're, they're, they're ill-defined. The really weird thing is that they are completely different things and that they have exactly the same charge. That's very, very, very strange. If you think about how many protons there are in a piece of material and how many electrons there are in a piece of material, yeah, I think that with so many of each different thing, if there's any difference in the charge, it would show up that they're balanced you know, so well. And what's really strange is that now that we've actually done even more exploration, what we find that is that although the electron is basically a lepton, we've never been able to find the uh, uh, anything adding up to make an electron. The actual proton is made of things called quarks, and a proton is made of two up quarks and one down quark. And that's three things making a proton. So, so this is a lesson in be careful what you wish for. Because when we had these three so-called elementary particles, people said there must be a, a building block that makes an electron and the similar building block in a different configuration must make a proton and the different building block in a different configuration and the same building block in a different configuration must make the neutron so they said let's find that basic building block and so they smashed these things as much as they could and they found that they got more and more weird particles and they really didn't know what to make of it they did things like they called some particles charm and some particles strange and they ran out of names and called some top and some bottom and so it went on and so this diagram here is the standard model and we just recently added the Higgs boson I say we I didn't have, have anything to do with it uh, they added the Higgs boson which is to do with mass and the gluon and the photon are to do with particles interacting with each other forces been generated so this is as best as we know it the standard model at the moment and what I'd like you to do is to go a little bit beyond the electron, the proton, and the neutron. I'd like you to be comfortable with this model. I'd like you to go to that next level and say, oh, there are things called quarks, there are things called leptons, there are things called uh, bosons, be they scalar bosons or gauge bosons, and be able, for instance, if I asked to fill in the blank. Um, so I put here negative charges, uh, held by electrons that are leptons and positive charges are held by protons which consist of two up quarks and one down quark. And if we look at this and just ask ourselves a few questions. True or false, a positive charge will repel a positive charge and that's very true. And true or false, an electron is a lepton and that's true. And then it's given away here because there's a second question. <laughs> a proton is one up quark with two down quarks. It's actually two up quarks and one down quark, so that's false. And then recalling the notes, what does the letter X stand for? Well, it's up and down. They named them in pairs, you know, up and down, charm and strange, top and bottom. There's, there is some logic to it. <laughs> um, so there we have it.